How's your day going? Not great. I got home, got ready to push off and head out, and as we were coming out of our slip, we got some wind. And our boat is too big for our narrow little fairway. So we were getting pushed into other boats, other boat, our neighbor's boat, and she has a very large bowsprit that we were about to run into. So I ran up to the deck and tried to fend it off and did something stupid and put my hand between our rigging and her bowsprit, crushing my hand in the process. I don't think my finger's broken. It's swollen and it hurts, but I'm gonna ignore it and hope for the best. So, now... Oh, you just am... got wet! <laughs> I got that on film! <laughs> <laughs> now I'm wet, seasick, and my hand might be broken. <laughs> I don't think anything else can go wrong. But who knows? It's only 5 o'clock. Chris is too upset to be on camera, but long story short, our engine is not in commission at the moment. Our muffler broke. Um, Chris thinks that he can fix it when we get to our anchorage. Luckily, we're a sailboat, so we have nice, beautiful white sails to get us where we need to go. Just a little slower than how quick we wanted to get there. But it's an adventure, it's a learning experience, and we are okay, so all is good. Mr. Grumpy Pants over there. So, think about this being the top of the muffler, and this is where the hose comes down and goes on to this. This is the flange. Right now, our flange on the muffler has about half of it missing. So I can't put a hose around it and clamp it down because there's nothing on this side to actually clamp down. So all the water is just escaping right over here. So what I need to do is, this inside diameter is pretty much the inside diameter of that flange in there. If I cut off this piece of bronze out about there, and put it in like that, I'll be able to have something to, you know, clamp around. We're gonna try that. Or this. Mm -hmm. I know you tried so hard. Mm -hmm. I know you've done your part. It's not fair. You did your time. How much longer the long stretch of sandy beach could be seen from miles offshore, as well as the backsplash of the waves hitting the surrounding cliffs and reef. The beach was calling my name, however, the engine was calling Chris's. Priorities prevailed, and with a blink of an eye, our heads were under our floorboards. So, I don't have a bandsaw or a handsaw, so I'm going to do it with my favorite wood saw. I'm probably going to ruin it, but I really don't have any other options at the moment. So. I put that bronze piece in there and this kind of went out a little bit, which is great. Now I can put some actual tension on this thing without it just breaking the rest of the flange off. Because that was the problem, is that I can't close it down too hard, otherwise the whole thing will break off and then we'll have no muffler and we can't use the engine at all. So now that that works so well, I think we'll be in business. I'm just going to dry it off real good and I'll have 5200 the crap out of it and then call it a day. And it'll be better than it was today. And it worked today. So, um, For people that don't know about a marine muffler, it's not just like a car where you can take, oh, take it off, man, it should be louder. Not really the case. A muffler on a marine engine is super important because um, if you can see that our engine is below the waterline, the waterline's about our floorboards. So when we shut off the engine, there's water in the exhaust. And if you shut off the engine and there was no muffler there, all the water in the hose will come back towards the engine you get what's called a back flush and water goes up back through the exhaust manifold and into the engine into your cylinders and that's how you get a frozen engine so i'm lightheaded right now i'm pretty sure there's a lot of carbon monoxide in here right now i'm not even lying so yesterday to top it all off our camera decided to stop focusing for this shot so to spare you from having to watch this horribly shot footage we'll just do a little reenactment so without further ado action so last night, after everything else went wrong, our oven stopped working. And of course it was right when I was about to put pizzas in the oven. That being my breaking point, I decided to remove myself from the situation so Chris could get to work trying to fix it. 
He must have had the right combination of swear words because just like bibbity bobbity bullshit, it started working again just like new. And now we're making pancakes and enjoying our day so far. After a long couple of days on board, we we're finally going to shore to explore Coaches Britos. This is the coolest beach we have been to on this island. It's nice and sandy and soft over there. And over here we have a ton of little tiny pebbles, which are just, they're so pretty to look at. There's so many different colors. After watching my many attempts at holding a headstand, Chris joined in on the fun being my partner for some acro yoga. Despite being dropped on my face, it was the most fun we had had in days. In 10 quick minutes, the cabin was stowed away and we were ready to bring up the anchor. Chris set the main while I set the Genoa and soon enough we were sailing east towards Channel Islands Harbor. For the first four hours, the wind was dreadfully light, pushing us long at three knots. Despite the lack of wind, we were still grateful to be moving in the right direction. Hours passed as we slowly sailed along the island, trying to keep ourselves busy and constantly battling the kelp flies. eight knots um ah this is great sailing right here I'm digging it Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> 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 